If I'm a star, it's For shame. We're going to check her passport and citizenship. If one of those come back from Berlin, so I'm beginning to suspect something has happened to that. She's passport. decided. <laughs> but Nadifa, welcome back home. And everybody else, we are going to become the new home. This is what Kenya does. We steal, um, you know, your allegiances. But just as a way of starting, do you have any opening words? It could just be as simple as, hi, I love your weather, your food is terrible, you guys are nice people. The just is in the bloom. Yeah, right, right. Yara, yeah, do you want to start soft? Just anything you want to say. Ashanti? <laughs> <laughs> like already you've got our hearts. <laughs> Uh, I'm super happy to be here. Uh, in fact, this is my second Institute African Festival, and I always find it amused, as, it's, as you said, they're not as boring as everything else. Thanks to all. I am really sharing the time that I spend here. Today we were at the few libraries, and we were able to see some of the beautiful progress and love that it's putting into books. So thank you very much for that, because it was an inspiration also for myself in terms of what needs to be done in Angola. And I shared straight away with Agoluza that also born the same place that I, I was born in one book. Hello, so I, I'm there to be here also. It was a long, a long journey. But, uh, You know, this is how we dream the future into being. So that one, we are taking it and we're running with it. We are going to do this festival, another one in the desert. Thank you very much. Chameleons and all with us, but you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I saw her only on, uh, you know, third choice, and I didn't know how beautiful she is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. These extraordinary individuals, Anya, you know, exchange so much in Germany between all those things, and here we are speaking in English only. Yeah. So that's the beauty of the of being, you know, face to face with each other. But I'm going to disapp you know, disappoint you a little bit here from Angola like this. Of course, this time, you know, first of all, a festival like this is organized in Hanover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. But they will not invite me because I was there and they will not invite me. I was in the city at the very moment when the festival takes place and they don't invite me. And the second is that now, even if they did, which they do, they kick me out of the country. So, <laughs> so, so two fronts so will be knocked out. The consequence is, my thank you very much to Nairobi for welcoming me because it is indeed here, and I see it everywhere, that I present my uh, three books that just came out in English, and they talk about Yaoundé, where I was born, where I simply cannot present it. So it, it, we have seen, I don't want to be tragic, but you know, thank you so much for that. I think that is what the future is, and uh, thank you. So now we come to our home girls. Nadifa, by the time we finish, I am determined to say I'm part Kenyan. Now that you're here, I am part Kenyan. <laughs> Just cut to the chase. Um, I'm really happy to be back. I think it's 
it's been eight or nine years since I was last in Kenya. Um, it feels very strange because I've, I've got so many friends who live here. Um, there's such a lively uh, literature scene that it doesn't feel as if it's been such a long time. But it's a real pleasure to be back in Africa. I've not been back uh, to Africa since uh, before COVID. And I'm soaking it all in, I'm like a lizard, just soaking in the sun, the energy, the warmth, um, the fun. And I look forward to the rest of the festival. I have to say this, I literally picked up the fortune man. And the first, you know, the first line, the king is dead, long live the queen. On the day the queen died, I was just like, oh. Talk about timing. So, welcome, Simon. Well, um, I, I had like this kind of this uh, uh, excitement within me, but also a split personality, a split multiple personalities. As, uh, um, uh, as a Nairobi resident, a Nairobi citizen, um, as an author, and, uh, and, 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 and as an absolute fan of, uh, of all these amazing, amazing authors here. And to be able to have in our city um, uh, our very beloved Professor Abdul Raza Gurna and his wife <laughs> You guys will be, I hope you understand the, 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 the I'm sure Anna may have mentioned something, but the graciousness of, of Prof uh, to join us. Uh, the whole world is looking for him. And we're, uh, and yes, but, uh, we, but we are, and then, and then we are this little, little festival that uh, has born, born of dreams and, and a longing and a love of literature. And because we had invited him before, um, before he got the Nobel Prize for Literature, but the fact that he honored the invitation says everything about this beautiful human being that we're so happy to welcome in the city. And I want you, my, my, dear, my dear Nairobians, please make sure that by the time he's leaving, he's crying because of the idea <laughs> of having to leave the city. <laughs> Each one of these very special human beings <laughs> who have absolutely graced us with the presence. Now, I want to admit something. Let me let me confess. Let me make a confession. I, I've always been. I've adored because um, I, I'm one of those. Uh, I've become a bit mad about my fanaticism about the, the books that I love, and, and that's everybody here. But to, I, I'm, I'm making a, I'm making a confession. I, I spoiled your name when I was in, in Lisbon. And I heard uh, Jose Eduardo Lisa was in town, and a friend of ours, Itai Selassie, organized a party just so that I could meet him. And I walk him to her, her apartment, and Jose's at the corner. You know, he's a very gentle human being, quiet, and, and you know, kind of you know, holding on to walls. And this African person launches upon him. <laughs> And I'm saying, stop me! <laughs> <laughs> and yet he's still here yeah, with us. <laughs> and yet he came. <laughs> he came to Nairobi. So thank you. Thank you again for your introduction. Anyway, guys, just it's good to be here and uh, let's have a great show. I'm interested to know what are you most looking forward to over these next few days?
And I said, do you want to go next to Patrice? We don't have to go in order like in front of the classroom things. So who's the person you think I want to? First of all, it's an opportunity to, to meet friends, to make new friends, and to discover, as the other two, as the other said, to discover new, 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 new writers. And uh, I think it's very important to you to, to have uh, literary festivals in Africa. There are not, not so, so many. I, I need to be in, in South Africa one first time. Uh, yeah, but I think I, I, I was. A lot of different festivals, including African festivals outside Africa, but very few inside Africa. So it's really important to have something like that. And, 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 and I say congratulations and do it again. Thank you. And, 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 and again. Yeah, so I must, I must say that for me it is a particular pleasure. You see, when I uh, taught your book, and when I read it, of course, to uh, teach it, I saw your name there. And I saw the comedy, and I was thinking, OK, maybe it's you know, like a book. <laughs> yes, uh, it is. You know, I, I'm sure many of you, or some of you, or if you haven't, please read it. It is simply an excellent book. There are very few books that are that, uh, that, that and, uh, and, it's, and I will give it to anybody to read either. Well, I did not come here to advertise for your literature, but I think <laughs> if uh, uh, nobody does, I'm, I'm willing to do it. So uh, in the book, you have references to many places. And in the middle of it, I see the name of my friend. I said, how did you make it into this little book? <laughs> <laughs> and me not, you know, so, uh, <laughs> simple jealousy. <laughs> But and she just, she just confirmed that it wasn't even only a mention, it was actually a lost you know. <laughs> So that is, I think, that space of freedom we, uh, that, that I'm looking forward to, where books become alive, where one goes away from simply preach and sees, and uh, the beauty sees the joy of uh, having read, of writing, of meeting people who come together in the spirit of Freedom, really, and of nurturing life. Patrice, that's the smoothest way I know to get yourself in one of Yvonne's books. <laughs> I've been wondering, because I had, had to do the essay, and you know, we're looking through it, and I said, what would it take for me to be able to say, you know, I'm in an essay where Yvonne O'War says, my friend Dr. Michelle Mangola <laughs> said, clearly I have not yet reached that level of wisdom, but you and I can aspire together. <laughs> I agree with everything that's been said. I think what's oh, catch. Um, one of the loveliest things so far was actually just having lunch together. Um, that was something that the last three years has has diminished the opportunity for. So just a really casual, relaxed lunch and conversation with other writers, with other people um, in summer like Nairobi is, is such a luxury. I think it takes you away from. Um, a writing life which is often solitary and in your own head and you remember that there are other people doing the exact same thing all over the world. Um, I just want to add something. So my book is uh, translated into English that it's through a South African publisher. And why I mention this is because um, of course books to go around Africa most of the times they rely on the goodwill of friends of friends, and they go on uh, luggage. So my book, they arrive in Nairobi. And I have to thank everyone, all the readers, <laughs> because it's been super well received, and I didn't want to finish my talk without <coughs> thank everyone, because my, I believe that the biggest readers of my book are here in Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to do a shout out. Zukiswa Wana, we thank you. Because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have missed it right at our fingertips. So thank you very much. Oh, we, uh, uh, what, what about uh, from the 
his first tour. I, I think uh, mostly uh, laughter and joy and new ideas. I want to be provoked. I hope others will be provoked. I hope there'll be a whole generation of new writers emerging or uh, closet writers finding confidence to uh, you know, speak their voice, write their stories. Um, I hope that, uh, I want to also, you, you gave a shout out to Zuki, uh, but there's a, a, a certain kind of special shout out I want to make to the Macondo tourists. We have a, we have a delegation who are literally tourists who came uh, from other places to, uh, to Nairobi and, and for the first time because of, because of this particular festival. Um, uh, the, the lights are off, but they're kind of around. And I'm asking again, Nairobi people, look out for them. They may, a lot of them travel alone. <laughs> Be kind to them. And they, again, make sure that when they are about to leave this city, they're also weeping. But yes, <laughs> but yes, I hope that there's a lot of joy, a lot of laughter, a lot of new stories, and certainly inspiration, and maybe another excuse for me uh, to tell the publisher why I haven't finished the book this year. <laughs> We could do one more last round of questions. Alain, do you have a question? Well, I mean, this idea of the future of memories, what a theme. I'm, you know, I'm curious what it provokes for you, like your first thoughts when you think of memory or the future of memories. Now, these are your okay. things. I just want to start with you, but then I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> Patrice? Yes, I, uh, you know, it will be a very long tale here, and I suspect none of us will like to hear a speech. But, um, you know, memory. The first, of course, uh, is that, uh, you know, my personal memory is I, uh, I'm, 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 I've started only now to write my, my own memoir. So I always cite Park and and put and, and, and remote fiction rather than uh, writing my own memoir. So my novels seem to know a deal with. Uh, you know, this, these are not sense. Don't deal with me even though some names are really people attached to me. And one of the reasons is I, I need a time, you know, literature is also serious, so I, I, won't, I won't lie. For me, it is, it is it's quite serious, otherwise I, I wouldn't be here. So I, uh, uh, you know, since I come from, uh, from, from a particular place where violence has been so so common, I mean, when you gather to come alone, you know, you, you feel it's a country that doesn't, hasn't gone through a coup or something like that. But when you think of it, you can, you can imagine three you know, colonial rooms, I think, you know, from the Germans to the French to the, you know, to the Brits, and uh, from World War I, World War II, and after that, uh, you know, uh, attempted coup, fake coups, real coups. <laughs> so you uh, essentially live there, and then you have a view of, of the childhood that I had, 10 years maybe of, I did not know you were, these were years of happiness. And yet they were. So that is uh, the memory for me, you know, to re evoke those moments of happiness. And of course, I need those moments when I write. And I think any one of us, when we write, feel happy. Yeah, that's really a moment of enchantment. And uh, so writing for me is that it is to, uh, to have all those ghosts evaporate and uh, be transformed into moments of, uh, of personal happiness. So forgetting the particularity of having anybody read it, but simply the feeling of having to press myself. Having, uh, you know, not necessarily in that sense, but uh, having you know, emptied my mind or my table, uh, you know, something like that. So I think this, you know, I'm saying it because I, from book to book, I, uh, you know, I, I write about the same city, the only, only. So I go from neighborhood to neighborhood. And at the beginning, it was, it was a joke, and then it became something I now systematically do. So when I write a novel, you know, in why this one neighborhood, and then this neighborhood, and that neighborhood. And uh, so it is fun, as you can see, but it's a particular type of fun. I, I don't know if you eat kola nut here. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So for those of us who eat kola nut, I think it's probably in West Africa more than it is here. So it is very bitter kola nut. It is actually extraordinarily bitter. But now you have to go through it. And then suddenly it starts awakening your tongue. You realize there is a certain joy. That particular joy only, uh, you know, my, my, my dad used to talk about. But now maybe, you know, I'm the dad of my own daughter, so I know about it somehow. That is writing to me. That's the joy I feel. And again, 
Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. I already told you why I'm so happy. I feel like those, uh, you know, those, those special students who got the exam answer long before everybody else, who, who were exploring, it was a long, long discussion with Anya, as, uh, as we sought to imagine this festival, and, you know, but quite frankly, apart from the, um, you know, just thinking about it, just, I, just look at the state of the world today, um, and, uh, and, you know, when you kind of take, take a step back, and realize that uh, the world we now live was, in many ways, put together by a couple of, uh, you know, by maybe a, a couple of people or societies, um, maybe one or two centuries ago. Uh, it was the imagination. It's it, that which we walk, that which we, that which becomes the life, it stems from the imagination of a group of people getting together and saying, okay. Uh, how about we colonize? Or, or how about we imagine, a, you, you know, we take control of the treasures of the universe and create this particular system? Because, and, and I think, I thought it was, it's a very powerful idea, quite frankly. But, you know, maybe those are the more negative examples. It's the same kind of um, space where somebody says, what would happen if uh, a human being went, into the, went to the moon? Or how, if birds can fly, why can't humans also fly? And, and things that start from very almost almost mundane um, space becomes the world, be, be, literally become the world. And, and that which becomes the world, that which we call the future, is that. Yes. And, and so, and, you know, in part of these kind of discussions and explorations, is the realization that the future is not that far away. It's actually right here, and it's uh, it, it, it it inhabits the gap between uh, uh, what if and uh, turning what if into a possibility. And I thought it would be fun. It would be fun to play with that. And I, I know I know that we have been, a lot of us have been so preoccupied with the African condition. And a lot of the African condition uh, harkens extremely, and rightly so, to the past. And I know uh, that we're talking about a traumatized people. And, uh, and trauma itself has its own kind of trajectory, its own uh, life. Um, but also uh, within the journey of, of trauma is the space for healing. But that is the hardest journey, quite frankly. Um, and, uh, and, and that space of healing, what, what would it mean um, if, we were to, if we were to write it, the, the what if of, of <laughs> Africa? Um, what would that particular African future look like? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I have to know the name. I, I, I really like the name Makondi. You know, uh, Makondi is a, a small village in the east of Angola. I, I believe it's the only place in Earth that has this name, is Makondi, the Angola Makondi. And Garcia Marquez was in Angola in 1977. He was invited by Fidel Castro to write about Cuban intervention, the Cuban troops, and he did in a, a wonderful uh, text. But uh, next, up, after that, uh, he, he did an interview talking about this trip to Angola. I think it, the first trip to Africa, maybe the only trip he did to Africa. And he said that it was very important, very important in his life. And uh, he, he, he said that he's like that he, when he, when he, when he, when he, when he, when he was in Angola, it is like that he was coming back to his own childhood. So he discovered the same universe that he, he had in Colombia. Okay. And the, all this, uh, 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 what we call now, religion magic, he says that he discovered that also in Golden Africa. So I think it's the, the right uh, word to this festival. <laughs> City of Life and the Future of Memory. Uh, part of my work is based on past memory. And uh, uh, what I realized is that we, as people living in a very edgy technology times, yeah, that we basically put all our life online. 
But those information is controlled by the tech companies that they can just press the button and uh, delete it. So I think, and I was reflecting on that, I think the way that we can be the guardians of the future of memories is by keeping our private archives. And uh, those things can be digital, but most of all can, should be physical. And I was recently in Sao Paulo, and, and I was delighted to see that in Sao Paulo they have uh, what they call a person museum. So I advise everyone to go online and look, because anyone can uh, just upload uh, their, uh, their memories, tell their histories. And I think if we think, you know, I don't know, in 50 years or in 100 years, what what are these generations going to meet when we live in Mars? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, it's what uh, it is our current privilege is to have the life that we fancy. That's what, what so far the digital world cannot offer. So I think we need really to start <laughs> record what it is to be alive. Because even the sky, if we start, you know what the sky is, and it starts, it's full of. Even last Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that in a moment. I was just <laughs> so I think because uh, fake memories, they are easily created with fake news. I really like Yara's answer, and I think that there's a similarity between our focus on family memories and inherited memories and. You know, as I get older, I guess I'm now, I, I now have a good amount of memories of my own life and my own experiences that at some point I should pass over, hand over to the younger people um, in my family and beyond. So I guess the future of memory for me means even thinking about the point where I'm not around and the memory of this era that we live in which is speeding up, it's um, chaotic and wild and quite frightening sometimes, but soon, soon it will be history and everything that we, we experience will be someone else's history.